Good evening, and welcome to Contraptions A to Z. Isn't this fun? This is uh, an awesome night for us to be able to tell you how much we appreciate the support that you've given to SPY and to this exhibit. It is kind of a first time for something like this to be in Mount Vernon, Ohio, and I can tell you it is exciting. And I think the people that come to see it are gonna be very happy about it. It's all possible because of what you have done. You have made this happen and it is the most wonderful, generous thing that you could do for the people who live in Knox County and we appreciate it so very much. We're not gonna have a lot of talking heads tonight. We just wanted to say a few things. So the next person on the docket here is gonna be Rachel Garcia. She is the executive director of SPY and she has a few things to say. I did wanna thank you all for being here and welcome you to this wonderful um, sciencey play space that has been created here by Clifford Wagner back here. He's the creator of this who I was lucky, lucky to meet at a conference and um, has really made this happen and we're so glad to have you and, um, and your support from, for SPY and this exhibit because this, um, we never actually dreamed we'd be having an exhibit right now and we're just very excited. So I'll let Clifford tell you the things that need to be told because just welcome. <laughs> Answered a classified ad for a cabinet maker at the Franklin Institute Science Museum in Philadelphia and got the job and I took to it like a duck to water because my father's an engineer, my mother's a teacher and I got to be all those things because so we're building and almost immediately I wasn't just doing woodworking I was doing uh, building hands-on interactive exhibits and you can you'll this is what this is here it is stuff that uh, really my science is the science of human attention span <laughs> that we want to get people's attention and hook them and, and teach them whatever it is that we're, look, that we're uh, whatever topic we're, we're trying to get across. So what I've loved about it, I was 11 years at the Franklin Institute, and what I loved about it was that whatever exhibit topic we were covering, you know, I got to learn about that topic. So it's really been lifelong learning. And my favorite statement is this, no matter who you are on this planet, every single person, each one of us, you spend half your life as a teacher and half your life as a student. But the trick is to know which to be when and to always seek opportunities for both. I never want to stop learning new stuff because that's what makes life interesting. And knowledge is a critical resource for all of our sustainable well-being. But in this continuum of human existence that we are all in, what do you teach? What are you, whoever you are, going to pass along to all those that come after us? And like everything else in life, we only get good at what we practice. So whoever you are, you have to practice teaching. So at 11 years at the Franklin, I jumped across the street at Please Touch Museum, which is, aims at kids six and under. It was a children's museum. And so what I said to myself was, OK, the topic is now childhood development, which is incredibly rich. And that's really what, what Spy Spot is about. But I, what I really want to talk about is the most important thing that I teach, that I learned at the Science Center, and is relevant to all of our lives in this amazing age we live in, is what I call the science of resources. There are five resource groups that no humans that ever were or ever will be can live without. The first is the natural resources. Anything the earth gives us, most especially plants and animals, but air, soil, mineral, waters, oceans, We'll call it land for short, but natural resources. The second resource group is our present labor, what each of us is doing today, who's growing our food, making our stuff, making our laws, teaching, whatever we are doing as human beings today. That, so labor, that's the second resource group. The third resource group is the past results of human labor, anything we now have that we can utilize buildings, tools, factories, transportation systems. It's the stuff or physical capital. The fourth resource group is time. Because it takes time to grow things, whether it's growing food, trees, infrastructure, kids, buildings, 
And our lifetimes are limited, so time is a resource. And the fifth resource group is knowledge, specifically the knowledge of how we use that land, labor, capital, and time to do whatever it is that human beings need done for quality of life. Because by definition, the first four are limited. We only have one planet, Earth, and we well know with the knowledge that we have, what we need to do to husband the fish in the sea and, the, and to do this. So it's critical that we apply knowledge to the natural resources. It's critical that we apply knowledge to our labor, that we are efficient at what we do, whatever our endeavors are, you know, that we're spending the least amount of time and that we're doing the right stuff. Because throughout human history, we as human beings have always been able to say for that third resource group, the past results of human labor, well, we only had the stuff that the humans that went before us were smart enough to leave us. So a key question that we all have to ask of our endeavors is what are we making? How is it useful not just to us, but to all those that come after us? So what I love, so that's why knowledge is so critical. What I love about this five resource way of looking at things is that whatever your religion is, Whatever your politics are, whatever age of human beings you were born into, we need those resources to live. And so what's a quality life? Well, whoever you are, you have your own knowledge base, so it has its own meaning for you. But there is a great way to measure it. And, I'm gonna, and it's this, to think about when we are old and looking back at our lives, what are you going to want to say that you did? Well, I guarantee you at that time that the most satisfactory answer isn't, I, get, I traveled here, I got to play with this. I got, it's going to be some version of, I helped. I helped my fellow human beings do X. I grew food, I made interesting stuff, I taught great things, but in some way. So what this is about, what I, why I bring this up is, what is spot? spot? This is a, a place where our kids get to go and get to play and, and learn to be free to play with stuff, to try it out, and to, to learn by looking and doing. And what Contraptions A to Z is about, it's really, it's a simple concept. We, we did want to get people to laugh because that is a way you can hook and hold people's attention. But a lot of it is, we human beings, we are 90% visual creatures. And we learn really well when we can see stuff. And one of the unfortunate things about our digital age, which is tremendously wonderful, is you don't get to see how that stuff's working. <laughs> but we, we definitely, you know, one of the pieces of knowledge that we need are, are how mechanical things work. Because mechanical things enable our lives in many ways. So that's what Contraptions is about. But I really want to leave, I'm going to end this talk. Uh, oh, there's one more thing I'm going to do. Is when this talk ends, we're going to do a walkthrough, and I'm going to go through individual devices, and you can follow me around or not, and, and just get some of the backstory of things if you're interested. Um, so, well, that's basically it. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> and, uh, but, so a couple things fall out of this. One is we have more knowledge than ever before. We are by far richer as a society, as a whole, than ever before. We know what to do. And we just, you know, we, we all need to weigh out what are actions and how are they helping. Because there are actions that, you know, somebody comes up with a way to make money and it somehow hurts, you know, what, what is good for the society as a whole. So, but we are by far richer than we've ever been before. The other thing is I always go around and I thank people for their labor. Whether it's the store clerk, you know, thank you for your work. Thank you for your work. And I really want to thank Rachel especially because she was a spark plug, a, a spy spot. I want you to put whatever energy, whatever money you can into this institution in your community because getting our kids to grow up with the ability to get knowledge. I'm, I don't know how else to put it, but, but uh, you know, the stuff, when you go in this spot, you know, you look in it, and it, oh, it looks just like a playground. 
But really, you know, what's happening is we are freeing our kids up to be explorers. And that is tremendous. Thank you very much.